Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to TBR's webinar, The Components of IoT, Building an IoT Ecosystem. I'm Justin Surgent, and I'll be present, uh, hosting today's session. IT vendors are approaching growing customer interest in the Internet of Things in a multitude of ways. TBR analysts study the most common vendor IoT business models and go-to-market approaches and analyze what it will take to make them successful. If you'd like to learn more about our research here on IoT at TBR after this presentation, please reach out to myself or one of the analysts after the webinar and we can help you learn more about our offer. Now before we begin, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to cover. First, we'll be recording today's session and posting it on our YouTube site, TBRI channel. We encourage you to visit our channel to watch this presentation or any of the previous webinars we've posted. Second, we'd like to uh, welcome your thoughts and opinions on what we're presenting today. Please send any questions to the Q&A function. We will address as many as we can at the end of the presentation. And finally, I'll be following up with all of you via email tomorrow after, sorry, Monday afternoon with the link to today's uh, recording as well as the slides from today's presentation. So be on the lookout for that on Monday. Now let me introduce the analyst presenting today. John Spooner is the director of TBR's Internet of Things and Devices Practice, where he oversees TBR's coverage of the computing and IoT markets, including companies such as Acer, Apple, Cisco, Dell, EMC, GE, Google, HP, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and Samsung. John and his team lead TBR's research in the areas of IoT, connected devices, and mobility, including adoption of connected devices for both corporate and personal usage, and the rising need for business-oriented IoT solutions, incorporating hardware, software, and services. Ezra Gottheil is a principal analyst in TBR's computing practice, where he leads coverage on IoT. He is also a principal researcher on projects including consumer and business tablets, device modernization, PC warranties, PC supply chains, app stores, and social networking. And now with that, let me hand this over to the analyst. Thank you, Justin, and good morning and good afternoon. Thank you for attending. Today we're going to be talking about the components of IoT, building an ecosystem. We'll be talking about the IoT applications and the vendor businesses that, that meet those applications. There are pictures of the two of us. We have in the past described IoT as being like climate change because it is enduring. It's been happening for a long time. Indeed, there are a lot of applications out there right now that, that are running that would be now be called IoT that were not called IoT and in many cases are not called that right now. However, the, the pace is accelerating and, and one of the things we've noticed since we first started using this metaphor is that the rate of acceleration is much greater than what we expected. It, it took off about the beginning of this year and, and was accelerated dur during the, the spring. We see a, a, a great deal of, of greater interest in IoT, both on the cu customer side and on the vendor side. And then it would, the, the, the implementation of IoT and the, and the practice of IoT will lead to a profound change. It will lead to a profound change in customer businesses, and it will lead to profound change in the, IO, in the IT and IoT vendors who are, are contributing to the space. And that's not simply my, my opinion. Michael Porter is the well-known expert on, on competition, and James Heppelman is the CEO of, of PTC. What we see happening with, with IoT in these days is, is that there are two pairs of, of tracks. Uh, we see on one hand, the vendors are pursuing one track uh, for developing IoT offerings, communicating with their potential customers, developing a strategy, building business models, working on products, and on their whole GTM. And at the same time, customers and potential customers are contemplating what they can do with IoT, who they will do it with, how they go about doing it, what changes in their business that's going to affect. In the, in the customer businesses, what we see here is that IoT, more than anything else, demands a close and, and continuing partnership between the business, where IoT is, is, is enabling transformation and enabling improvements in, in both efficiency and in product provision of products and services and the technology that supports those changes. This is always, of course, true in, in IT situations. But because IoT is more um, broad, less well-defined, and because it touches more of the, the, the physical world around the business, 
this is a, a, a great of greater importance in IoT than in, in other IT systems. We also see a need for coordination between business and technology on the on the vendor side as they develop their, their strategic approach, their business approach, and at the same time develop and, and repurpose their technologies to meet the needs of IoT. Well, IoT is going is being propelled and will be propelled even faster by what we regard as an explosive mixture. So on one side we have business needs. Business businesses increasingly have to adapt to the new markets, adapt to the competition, adapt to the faster pace of, of business business change. They need rapid transformation both of both small and large scale. And at the same time, the technologies that are becoming available and becoming more affordable that, that extend the, the benefits of IT the, to the physical world, and that's where IoT lives, um, create the opportunity for a far wider array of applications, far greater impact on businesses, and new and different applications. Innovation, invention, and, and strategic advantage um, through the use of, the, of these new projects. This, this creates a, a circumstance where if there is a spark, if the, the business need is united with the potential of IoT, you're going to see very rapid growth and very rapid deployment. The key to this, the, the spark making the change are the specific applications, the applications of each, each business, the application of, of, of each segment of that business, and the applications across businesses by vertical and then finally horizontally. This spark is a merger of business and technology, and this, this has to be a sustained merger. This, there's often a tendency in, in technology situations for, for the business and technology group to, to share specifications, to share needs, and then to go off and not work together on a continuing basis. Where things are as new as they are in IoT, where they're as diverse as they are, where the potential is as great as it is, and, and where we're at really the invention stage in the evolution of the utilization of technology for business, the need is for this, this relationship between business and technology to be sustained. Vendors who can facilitate this, who can talk technology to business and business to technologists are going to be the most successful. And, and customers that sustain this relationship as their, their IoT-based systems evolve are going to get the greatest possible benefit out of IoT. There are, however, hurdles to the explosive growth that we see coming in IoT. And let me assure you that IoT is, we believe, growing very rapidly at this point. However, that, that pace is yet to accelerate further as these hurdles are dealt with. The first one is the hype itself. Also, there is what we talked about, this definition of the applications, the coming together to decide what to do and how to build it. There are patterns of these applications, both on the business and on the technology side, so that more applications can be invented more easily, innovated off of existing patterns. And finally, there's development of horizontal cross-business cross business applications and technology architectures that allow for greater leverage, greater growth, greater scale. Standards need, need, to be, um, need to emerge and be defined, although we think this is probably less important than, than, than many in looking for standards believe. And finally, the vendors have to tell their stories. They have to reach out to the potential customers and establish relationships and establish their point of those relationships, where they touch in the IoT pro process. So if we look at hype, we see that, that Hype generates interest and actually drives activity, but at the same time, it creates impediments because the hype is vague. It says you should be thinking about IoT if you are a customer, potential customer business or if you're a vendor, but it doesn't say what, you, what should you be thinking about it. It's also ambi ambitious. Now, we believe that uh, this ambition will be borne out over the long term, but in the short term, it's quite often 
uh, better to look for, for uh, low-hanging fruit, for opportunities of, of smaller scale and less ambition with which to get started and familiar with the project. Evolving projects are often more successful than all at once transformative projects. And some of the hype is undoubtedly unrealistic, raising expectations that, that everything is ready to uh, go and that the changes will be sudden and guaranteed. What, what both sides of this equation, the customers and the vendors need, are applications, examples, deployed applications, ideas for applications, designs for applications. The potential is there. Everyone can agree on the potential, but without applications, it's hard to get started. So let's talk a little bit about the, the potential of IoT and the hurdle. If we look at, at, at the way IT uh, solutions are constructed, they're constructed out of a collection of, of parts, and we're all familiar with them. There, there's networking, there's servers, there's, there's storage, um, there's, there's the services that support them, there, 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 there's uh, platforms for coding, um, there's security, et cetera. We've been working with these, these blocks for a long time, and we have established patterns of the kinds of things we can build with these blocks. We know what sort of what the scopes are. We can say we want to build something like this only different in the following way. What IoT does, it takes is take the same basket of, of blocks and adds to it a new kind of block. And the block is actually a, a class of blocks. So this is these are the physical endpoints, the things that touch the real world. Mostly they involve uh, sensors. Sometimes they involve actually actuators, things that can that that can move move things. There are things that sense position and altitude and temperature and and flow and weight and all that kind of thing. And whichever one or several of these you need for your particular problem get plugged in and merged with the other existing pieces. Together they create a far greater array of potential constructions. And it is that array that, that, that is both the opportunity and the hurdle of IoT because you have to decide what to build. The projects are as yet undefined. We don't have a lot of, of templates and patterns that tell us what we can build. We know they need to solve business problems, but even that isn't a sufficient answer because every business has multiple problems. The question is which one you want to solve and which, where you want to begin. So it leads to kind of the, the paradox of, of choice. There's, there's so much one could do, it's hard to know where to start. What we, we will be doing and we expect the industry to be doing and we expect the customers to be doing is watching for patterns. So the history of, of IT is one where individual problems are solved after we've seen several solutions, we see their similarities in a, and a pattern begins to be discernible and we're going to be very vigilant on that because the patterns are what drives innovation. Once you say these two or three or four or five things are similar in the following way and they form a pattern, you can say I want to do a variation on that pattern. And innovation is far less challenging than an invention when you have a completely blank slate in front of you. And there are patterns both on the, on the business and the technical side of these things. The business is more important and more challenging. What can be done with technology is fairly well understood and how to put the pieces together is pretty clear once you've defined what you want to do. But what you want to do with your business is, again, this, 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 oh, this blank slate. We've, what patterns we can now see is, is three broad classes of applications in terms of what they accomplish from a business point of view. There's, there's cost reduction. This is, this is among the most common. These, these have to do, do with things like uh, predictive maintenance, routing, um, flow of, of goods, inventory, reducing time from, from point to point in a process, and so on. There's product to service improvement whereby products become more reliable, more capable, can deliver more value to the customer by virtue of the inclusion of, of, of sensors and the gathering of data from those sensors. And then finally, there's a, 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 a 
broad class of different kinds of projects that we call leapfrog projects. These are ones that really transform business models, add new business models. A lot have to do with leveraging data not directly into the system from which the data is gathered, repurposing that data, and sometimes reselling that data. We see IT companies like, like, uh, like IBM and it looks like Google actually acting as information brokers, uh, providing a way for, for one customer who's, who's gathering and, and creating data to resell that data uh, to other customers who are not in a competitive position. What we will see, irrespective of the patterns that emerge, is we believe that the IoT space is going to be far more diverse than, say, the ERP space or the CRM space. Because at the ends of the, of the, the, the application, where the, where the application meets the physical world, there's such a great variety of things that can be touched. Nevertheless, there will be a drive on both the customer side and on the vendor side for uh, an understanding of IoT applications in a horizontal manner, describing common business processes that cut across the verticals and specialties. And, and, and identifying common business functions that can be delivered more effectively and more efficiently by virtue of using IoT technology. This, again, makes it easier to make choices about what to build and when to build it and, and to decide on the priorities for the projects that can be built. And it allows the vendors and, therefore, the customers to benefit from scale, from the, the reuse of, of intellectual property in, 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 the, in the design of, of the components that, that go into IoT applications. There is a, a, a wish for standards, a need for standards, a desire to have standards. And that really comes down to a, a kind of future proofing of the applications. A need to know that, that when you invest and build, the thing will continue to function, that it can be interfaced with other, other systems, that it, it, it will, uh, it, the, the components will evolve and improve, and that uh, you, you're able to, to use this, this application constri constructed out of building blocks in a flexible manner. What we're looking at is a situation where most of the pieces in IoT uh, applications now currently do fit together because most of them are ones we are familiar with and where the interfaces and APIs and standards have evolved. However, the new pieces in mostly involve the things and the networks that support them. And these are the ones where, you're, where, where we're looking for standards. You don't want to be left at, alone as, as, as one of the very small operators or owners of a system that's using a a, a protocol or a, or a, a kind of, of communication network that is, is not broadly deployed. What you're looking for isn't so much a standard, we believe, as a critical mass. That is to say enough other users, other customers, other vendors of using that particular technology, that particular interface, that particular API, that particular object library such that it will not be abandoned. This isn't the case like, like consumer uh, technical goods where, where a single standard is very important. This is really not a, a, uh, a Betamax versus VHS or, or Blu-ray versus high density uh, video kind of situation. You just need enough in that group so that the vendors will continue to support it, the developers will continue to evolve it, and you'll be able to continue to use it. And the reason for this is that IoT applications are going to be so diverse. If we look at the things and the environments in which these things are operating, they're going to have different needs and different requirements for how far away they're spaced from each other, from the su supply of power, from the bandwidth required, from latency, et cetera, such that, that there will be uh, a, a, a diversity of, of things and thing, thing networks, whether you call all of them that become eventually adequately supported standards or not, it's kind of a, a matter of, of nomenclature, but there's going to be a multiplicity of networks out there going forward. 
we hear a lot of talk about platforms and, and most of the vendors who have been most aggressive in communicating about IoT have spoken about a platform. But what we're really facing is mini platforms where some part of the space of, a, of IoT applications or potential applications have some commonality and can be made to, to interact with each other and correspond with each other. There are applications platforms in play. There are, there are uh, communications and networking platforms in, in play. There, there are data flow platforms in play. There are cloud platforms in play. There are, we believe, not going to be any end-to-end -end universal platforms that embrace the entire application. Uh, or if they do, they will only embrace some specific layer of them. Uh, but, but talking about a platform allows you to begin to talk about the, 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 the ecosystem of the components that you're, that you're putting together and to give them, give them some relationship to each other. Because of the diversity, you can't expect a, a single universal platform or one of several offered platforms to fully embrace these applications. We see, we see platforms in play from Cisco, from GE, and from IBM, offered and, and ostensible platforms. And when we look at them, they, they handle some set of, some subset of the components, they handle some subset of the process but they, they're not in any sense universal. What they're basically saying is with our company as your lead, we can construct something that works. Microsoft is going to be very big on what we might call the, the middleware piece of this puzzle with Azure that, that already has IoT services and will connect those IoT services, Microsoft hopes, to, to, to Microsoft Analytics. Intel is going to be involved at, at the hardware end, and, and for that matter, uh, Samsung claims that they're going to be in, in commercial IoT there as well. Google clearly has um, both a cloud platform and, and, the, the, and a mobile device platform, and now it's announced a, a, an operating system slash platform for things. They're fairly disconnected at this point, but we believe that Google will will be converging them over time. HP has announced a platform that is largely involved with, with um, network provider applications. So the platforms are, are around. They indicate some degree of, of maturity and some degree of beginning to assemble some of those blocks into uh, small, small sets of blocks that are connected, much as you would build one of your, your constructions out of these blocks. Let's look a little bit at, at vendor business models because the, uh, there are different approaches to this puzzle and they're all related to which vendor, what the vendor is doing in terms of defining the IoT, helping the customer define the IoT application, design the IoT application, implement the IoT application, provide parts for the IoT application, or operate the IoT. So when you look at Accenture, Accenture leads with its relationship with the business and its understanding of business needs, and it provides little of the technology but a lot of both business and technology expertise. They necessarily and appropriately partner for an awful lot of the technology. But again, the, the, the vendor that is closest to the business part of the customer, closest to the business design part, closest to the specification and architecture of the application uh, is, is, is the leader and, and garners the, the greatest margins. IBM and, and Cisco um, ha offer a, a hybrid business model where they have a, a business consulting operation and they also order, offer significant parts of the technology. IBM emphasizing its analytics part of the technology, but it also has, as we know, network storage servers, et cetera, and they certainly offer a lot of, of both build and, 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 and operate uh, services, Cisco emphasizing its, its, uh, its, its networking and, and expanding out from its networking to provide some of the security and, and, and um, uh, data flow middleware 
kind of, of parts of the business. Cisco also has a substantial business consulting operation and it has a, a uh, converged uh, computing operation, both of which could play a role but so far haven't been part of Cisco's story. We imagine as implemented, we will see those groups involved in the applications as they're being, being uh, made and run. HP and Dell have both uh, not done a lot about positioning their, their broad array of, of components, many of which are, are going to be parts of many IoT applications. These include the expectable hardware components, the, the servers, storage, networking, et cetera, uh, and, and, but they also include important software regarding uh, security and analytics. And, and, and management, and they also involve services to, to build and maintain. Both of these companies do have some relationship with, with business to business application definition and business strategy, but nowhere near as strong as the, the, the three companies mentioned before. And this, uh, this puts them as a, at a bit of disadvantage in, in driving forward the, the, uh, and, and helping initiate IoT projects with their customers. They will have to work quite often with partners to accomplish that, and, and HP is far more experienced than Dell in partnership relationships of this kind, but Dell has been working quite a lot to, to uh, strengthen its, its partnering capabilities. And finally, we, we include GE, which starts from the uh, business side of, of the operation, originally not an IT company at all, having built IoT systems internally, it then took the platform it developed to, to build its own IoT systems and, and started to make it available as an IT vendor. We don't think that she is going to be alone in doing that because the, the sensors and the machinery in, in which the sensors are embedded are the differentiated part of IoT solutions. So that if, you, if you've if you got those, you, you can partner, as GE has, for instance, with Cisco, to provide other pieces of the puzzle, but they certainly know about the, the, the mechanical, physical world end of the IoT solution. Let's look just at one of these, these companies. Uh, Cisco had made a, a very impressive presentation on, on its IoT system. Uh, just this last month, and Cisco, in fact, has been in IoT and, and, and has announced its commitment to IoT probably earlier than many of these other companies, although IBM has, has also been in IoT for a very long time. It just didn't call it that. It's Smarter Planet, Smart Cities, et cetera, were basically an IoT uh, set of operations. Cisco announced uh, a broad and deep offering involving all, all the major parts of this, including uh, application development and security and, and, and uh, even analytics. But when you, you uh, lift up the cover, you see that it is uh, more closer to the core of, of, of what Cisco has, has offered for years, which is uh, intelligent switch, switching and routing, wireless, um, incorporating uh, security, and then they're beginning to hand things off to, to partners. As I said, they claim analytics, but they're, they're analytics that are sort of confined to the networking end of the world. And the, interestingly, the offering mentioned little or not at all to other pieces of Cisco that, that will play a role in, in comprehensive IoT offerings. Nevertheless, Cisco has been very successful in claiming mindshare in the IoT space. And given the, the uncertainty that's going on and, and the, the, the seeking after partners, vendors, ideas, support, we think this is probably a very good idea and will help uh, Cisco maintain the leadership that is, is asserted by actually going forward largely in the, in the network provider space. And they've got real products, and they have real applications. The real products are, are uh, pieces of hardware that are specifically evolved to support IoT applications, and some of the, the networking, communications, and security requirements of IoT applications. 
but it is narrower than, than it appears. It is really focused on, on, on the communications and not even as broad as Cisco the company could offer. The company appears to be siloed in this, and, and this is not the only company where we've seen this pro problem, where, where announcements having to do with IoT come out of, obviously come out of one department of a company, not out of the, the entire company itself. Let's look a little bit at the IoT ecosystem. Uh, one of the reasons that this is, is so important is that IoT is additive. Unlike cloud, which is largely a substitute, substitute, subst a substituting uh, innovation, uh, IoT is, is additive. It's additive to the businesses. It, 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 provide, it provides new functionality and new benefits and new value, which is why they're willing to spend new money and therefore contribute more to the revenue and profit of, of vendors. They're getting more benefits and therefore it's more available in the budget. But it's also additive to existing IT systems inside the, 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 the customer base so that you, these are extensions of the, the IT system that, that all businesses now have and there's a good deal of integration coordination and leveraging of synergies work to be done as well as implementation of the IoT application itself. Let's look a little bit at the IoT components. As we said, it's just about everything you can think of in, in IT, hardware, software, network, and services. But there are, are some that are, are likely to make uh, the, the, most, the greatest gains, more fully leverage the potential of IoT, and be most critical to the success of IoT projects. Obviously, IoT is very dependent on, on networking. Um, and secure networking. So we see security and networking both there. In a lot of cases, but in not in all, some degree of analytics are, are necessary to fully benefit from IoT. Well, there are a lot of systems where there, is, there are sensors already in place and they're feeding back information to um, gauges, to oper to, uh, to, to uh, 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 control rooms, et cetera, but the potential in IoT in these cases is consolidating and analyzing that information, so analytics plays a huge role. Nevertheless, one of the things that, that's emerging at this point is that um, the kind of, of naive model of IoT that all the data gets sent back to the cloud and it's analyzed and then that action is pushed back to the edge is probably not going to take place because of high costs and high latency, and there looks to be a need for additional computation, analysis, and action that actually takes place at the edge. Now, the edge has is, is, is been termed uh, bringing com compute to the data, and it involves putting some processing very near where the, the data begins to enter the network uh, for all the reasons I described. Uh, Cisco talks about fog, which is a more vague uh, designation of something going on toward the edge. It, it's also a kind of nice metaphor. The cloud has moved out, out to, the, to the edge of, of the network. But we think that that fog is something that at this point is, is kind of a future view as we, we learn to leverage the processing capability of the things and the, the processors near the things, the kind of um, multi-tier architecture where, where processing is placed right near the gateway, long before you get up to the, to the data center or the cloud, looks to be the, the, the leading edge of, this, of the architecture development, as it were. So we look a little bit at, the, at what we face going ahead. The business focus is critical here. These are new things. They're doing different things in all the businesses, and you have to keep, keep your eye as a vendor, as an as, as implementer inside your business on the, the business benefit to be sought, and how your system delivers that. These systems are, are not build once and walk away. They, they require a great deal of flexibility and adaptability, both because businesses need, themselves need to adapt to be flexible, but, but also because there will be insights into what additional benefits can be gained were the system to be extended or changed. And we will face, even as we horizontalize, a, a greater degree of, of diversity in these applications than we face in IT as it, as it now stands. And there's already a considerable degree, the umbrellas of 
ERP and CRM, et cetera, um, are pretty broad in, uh, umbrellas right now. And, and the key here is understanding the need. What is, what is the driving business focus? And then assembling the pieces to fit that need. So that brings us to the conclusion of this, of this discussion, and we, we welcome questions at this point. Let's, let's start with, can I get these slides for future reference? Uh, yes, please, please contact us, and we'll, we, will, uh, we will provide a, a, a version of the deck. Um, you mentioned looking for patterns. How do we best identify them? When we do, how do we equip our sales force to capture them as IoT opportunities? Um, well, I think the simple answer to that is, is, is subscribe to our syndicated uh, uh, publications on IoT because we are going to be looking across the breadth of applications be, being developed both in specific verticals and across all the verticals, and we regard pattern identification and categorization as one of the key skill, our key skills and the key skill of analysis. But the, but the point here is to look for commonalities, look for, look for the, the benefit to the business, what that does to transform the business, and, and then to look at what, what the, the, uh, the necessary architecture is to, to drive that. Uh, what are some of the verticals where IoT is moving most quickly? What are some that are moving more slowly? Can you say why? Uh, the, what we've seen is an awful lot of, of movement in, in manufacturing and, and uh, logistics, a, a good deal in, in healthcare, uh, and a good deal in um, extractive industries and power and, and energy and oil and gas. Uh, why, I think, has a lot to do with, with uh, the scale of the processes um, the nature of, of the, the equipment, which in many cases is already instrumented for local readouts, um, and, and, and the, the availability of investment funds that, that can be justified by, by greater payout. A great set of opportunities for, for IT, for instance, is in, um, in um, smarter cities, in, in, in government and public, but the money there is, is, is harder to get, and that has, has slowed the progress in that arena. How does the market look in, in 18 months, 36, and 60 mo months from now? I would say 18 months from now, we're, we're, we're looking at a rapidly moving but still very much emerging market. And the, some leaders have emerged, but they're not necessarily the long-term leaders. There are some holes to be had, to be seen. The systems themselves, are, you know, particularly the, the application uh, platforms and the, and the libraries are going to be kind of thin. And there's also going to be a lot, still a lot of contention for specific protocols, even for similar kinds of physical environments. 36 months from now, you'll see a, 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 a solid, business driving forward with, with some longer term leaders being very clear and certain uh, platforms emerging as, as, as very much um, not necessarily dominating but taking very large pieces of the market. However, even 60 months out, you're still seeing a very fluid situation because you don't just build one IoT application for business. You, you continue to look for places to leverage, to innovate, and eventually to, to pull off the shelf uh, applications that can be useful. And, and, and you'll see the beginning of these off-the-shelf solutions coming out in 36 months, and you'll see a far greater array of them at a far lower price as a result of scale in 60 months, and that's, and that's where you will also see, therefore, much greater volume because of the affordability. Do you see regulatory frameworks developing? If so, are they diverging across different jurisdictions, particularly around privacy and security? We don't see them developing um, now. There are regulations that apply in terms of where data is, is permitted to go and what precautions have 
be must be uh, engaged when when gathering data, particularly about uh, people. So that there are regulations that apply in healthcare, but they're not coming out of IoT. They pre preceded IoT. What do you see the role of telcos in the I IoT space going forward? Um, telcos are, are are critical components in in the in the movement and and near 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 nearby processing for IoT data and of course this this plays most importantly in the more diverse applications where where uh, cellular or Wi-Fi data are necessary. When you've got uh, confined applications, the shop floor that's that that the the processing may still be entirely w within one campus, there's less of an opportunity. The security and 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 quality of service, particularly latency here. Uh, are, are particularly important for some classes of applications. They're real opportunities. Telcos, however, don't tend, I think, to be to be leaders in this space because they, it's only for a relatively small number of businesses do they have a deep awareness of of the of the specific business specific vertical. So they become a, a component and a solution. They they have to to partner in order to become part of part of the solutions. Can we share a set of sensors That's privately? Um, are there any other questions? I think that's all we have. I think that's all we have. Thank you very much. All right. So, actually, we got one more. Have you seen a unique support services value proposition for hardware and software support? Um, no, we haven't. Uh, that, that's, an, that's an interesting approach uh, to the IoT space. Um, we have this discussion was entirely focused on commercial IoT. Um, we have a separate practice that covers connected devices, and we have seen some interest among vendors for providing uh, uh, services and support to to um, connected devices, particularly home automation devices. But in terms of a particular solution for for support and, and, and software support, we have not seen it. And we'd certainly be interested in, in talking about it if if your company is is developing or considering developing one. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, we have that's privately. All right. So yeah, I think that's all we have. Um, so thank you, Ezra and uh, John, and thank you everyone for your questions. You can follow the analysts as well as TBR on our wealth of social media options here on this page, uh, and please check out our YouTube channel for our previously aired presentations. <coughs> Additionally, before you sign off, I'd like to ask you to take a brief survey about today's webinar. We're always looking to improve both the information we provide as well as how we provide it for you. So <coughs> we'll leave the chat function open for another minute or so for folks to ask last minute questions. Otherwise, thank you for attending and uh, have a great afternoon.